Okay, this is going to be video three of uh, servo controls. Um, what I've done is I went ahead and kind of wrote the, uh, a small program for the, uh, the number one axis, or axis number one on the virtual. So uh, just keep in mind we are using the uh, uh, RS Logics emulate. We're using, so we're not using any hardware at all. Um, so we can't do some, there's some things we can't do like motion on, motion off. Uh, we can do uh, action status and stuff like that. Um, because we just don't have those tags. You, you don't get those tags unless you have an uh, actual hardware device. But uh, we are using version 20. Uh, and to kind of go over a few things, you know, we put our program in, in uh, enable time synchronization. We have... Uh, Again, we have our uh, reserved for system task and communication because we are using a, uh, a periodic task. We have our motion group, the attributes as far as the course rate updates, update uh, time set for 4.0 milliseconds, and we have our auto tag update on. So to kind of go over the way I've done this is, um, and I do it like a, a mini state machine, if you would, um, just kind of very cut and dry, real simple state machine. Um, but to kind of, I'll, I'll go ahead and walk through this. So right now, the virtual axis is in shutdown. So when I press the reset button, what happens is, the reset, the motion axis shutdown reset uh, actuated because it was in a shutdown state. Had it had been in an axis fault, then it would have went and did an axis fault reset. Now that the state is actually not in shutdown reset or our, our shutdown status, then it moved a one into my state. So at that point, And realistically, what I should have right here is I should have a compare. So I should have a compare right here saying that if state 0 is equal to state 1, then allow my home so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm not allowing the home button to be pressed if I have a system shutdown because you cannot home a servo with with it shut down it'll give you a fault so I'm saying now that I've moved a one into here into the state zero and state zero now equals state one then I can home so to kind of show you this um, Let's, let's bring this up to so the current the current uh, position of this axis is 636 so if I push home now the current position is a hundred now if you recall in the last video we set our our axis one home to a hundred so if you look at the properties, we set the homing feature to a position of 100. So it homed to 100. It did that and it moved to the next state. So it, it pushed into uh, state 3. So we can now jog at this this point, and what I'd like to have done, um, and what I, I may need to go back and fix, is for it to go to equal to state three. So I pushed a two, and immediately it pushed down here. So what we should do is say. We should actually have this in front of this 
So let's push this again and come back and say shut down. So we shut down our axis and we're starting over. All right? So we hit our reset button. The axis state went to 1. We now are home again. State went to 2. Now I want to move to position. Now I do not want to transition to state 3 until I've moved to a position of 500. Now we are at 100 right now. So I'll toggle this. And we'll go back and monitor the, uh, the tag. And you see it's it's actually running. So with it running, and I'll show you this too, because this PC, right now the in-process bit is on. And until the actual position hits 500, it will not transition to the process complete bit. Process complete bit will then actuate it down from uh, state 3 or state 2 to state 3 just like it did. So it, it moved to position of 500. The pro it went from in process to process complete. The instruction did. And now it went to where I can jog it. Now at this point I can initiate a jog and it does a state 4 which does not do anything until I release the jog button. So being that these are bits I'm toggling, I'm going to untoggle the move to position. And what we'll do is, again, we'll go back and look at the state. We'll look at the uh, axis and see what it's doing. So we know the axis is jogging. Right? We know it, the speed of the axis is set right here at 10. 10 units per second and then we're, we're actually running the axis now with that said if like if I stop if I let go of the jog button then it will stop so the axis stop right here and it goes back to state 3 saying okay I can still jog if I would like to so I start the jog back and it's still jogging. So at that point I come down and I stop it again. Now to start the sequence back over I just basically do a motion shutdown which will come down here and throw the axis to a shutdown state and throw it the state back into zero so that we can start the process all over. So you've seen that, you've seen the instruction happen, and you've seen the, the shutdown state, our status, go high. So at this point, to kind of go over the way I had this programmed, uh, this being a, a virtual axis, I cannot do a motion axis on or a motion axis off. Now, standardly, what you would do is you would have your motion shutdown reset along with your motion fault reset and if if all those are fine then you would come down here and first off you would do a motion axis off then you would do a motion axis on directly after that you want to make sure you cut the servo off before you cut it on and I know that doesn't make sense but Say for instance the servo was on, it was told, told to come on from a motion axis direct command like, like we've done here before. Say somebody has come in here and done that or, or it was latched in or, or some, for, some, some other means of the program cut it on to actually go to a motion axis on. You want to make sure you, you, the, you first issue a motion axis off before you do anything else. Then you do a motion axis on, and then you can come in and do a, a moved position. You can do a jog. Um, so in this description, what I have done, 
uh, being that I don't have any physical hardware, so I do, do not have the ability to do a motion axis on or a motion axis off. So I pretty much have skipped that feature. Now what I've done is I've programmed a reset to reset. Say for instance I had a fault, I had an axis fault or something of that nature. And of course I can't edit that tag. So um, what we can do, I don't know if I can force a fault. Probably not on a, on a virtual axis. But the, the point stands true. If this were to fault out, then what we should do here is we should actually have uh, this state. So we should copy this, paste it real quick, and we should say, okay, if this is not in shutdown state, then I want to come in. So essentially both of these are not, they're not going to be in play at one time. <clears throat> so if it is not in shutdown state, and that it's not equal to zero, that means it's in a fault, reset the fault. Then if it's not in a shutdown state, there's no fault, go to state one. At state one, you push the home button, and then you can home the servo. As soon as the process is complete, it moves a state two into the, the uh, transitions to state control into state two. In state two, you can move to position, and after you move to position, <clears throat> after it, it goes from process or in process to process complete, in process complete, it will then move uh, state three into to the state. And in state three, you can then jog. And then while you're jogging, if the jog button is released, it will go to state R. Uh, it will be in state four while you're jogging, but it then after it's released, it will in initiate a stop command and throw it back into state three. So at state three, you can then go back to a jog state or a non-jog state. So to, to watch that run through again, we'll reset it. You see that the status come. So the virtual access stat, a shutdown status is no longer in a shutdown it's the status is good it's in a one we then home it so at that point we've homed it then we want to move to position now it's moving to position like we've shown in the in the axis properties it's moving to the, the 500 that we're commanding it to right now. So as soon as, and so the in process bit is high. So it will not transition states until it hits the, the position of 500. When it hits the position of 500, then it will, the process complete bit will come high and it will move to state three. And we'll see that right now. Okay, so at this point, being it's a bit on toggling, I'll untoggle it. I can jog it. So now I can initiate a jog. And that's an in process bit. So I want to transition my states on the in process bit to say, okay, if, if equal to four, then when a stop is pressed, or not a stop, but when the jog is released, so if I'm pushing the jog button, if I release the jog button, it immediately stops. And when it stops, it goes back to a jog state. So it goes, uh, it transitions the state to a state three, which allows you to continue jogging if you wanted it to. So this just basically describes a simple state machine, how it's done, uh, how functional controls are done, and how basically we, we do a state machine or, or how we do uh, motion axis you know controls and I just wanted to show this you know real quick so this is video three um, using a a virtual axis so again I hope you uh, hope this answers some questions that you have and uh, we'll continue this on video four and possibly go into video five okay thank you for your time and leave me your comments and uh, subscribe I appreciate it if you subscribe thank you